Everyone knows that astronauts experience weightlessness in orbit. But gravity affects objects at even infinite distances, and astronauts aren't even that far away. If the Earth were a basketball, the International Space Station would be orbiting little more than a half a centimeter above its surface. In fact, astronauts are affected by 90% of the strength of Earth's gravity we feel on its surface. So what gives? It turns out that you don't need to get rid of gravity in order to get rid of the sensation of weight. Let's take a step back and ask a question that might have seemed obvious a minute ago. What causes the sensation of weight? Earth's gravity pulls on everything that has mass. So as you stand on the surface, every part of you is being pressed down towards the center of the Earth. And you don't fall towards it because the ground beneath you is pushing upwards with an equal and opposite force to keep you still. This upwards force isn't distributed evenly across your whole body like the downwards force of gravity, though. It all comes in through your feet. If you think of yourself as a big spring, gravity would be compressing you against the force of the ground. That compression and the muscles on your body that fight it to keep you upright is where the feeling of weight comes from. But gravity alone doesn't cause this kind of compression. You need something to oppose it. If you were falling towards the Earth without any opposition, only gravity would be acting on you. Remember that gravity acts on every part of your body at once, giving each part of you the same acceleration. So a spring in this situation wouldn't experience any compression, just uniform, unimpeded acceleration towards the Earth. Likewise, if you're falling, your muscles have no tension, and as a result, free fall feels weightless. You're moving with the pull of gravity, instead of fighting it. Put differently, the force of gravity is all going into moving your body towards the Earth, and none of it is going into opposing the muscles that allow you to stand on its surface. In fact, this is how your body can tell when you're falling. If you step off of a cliff, all the muscles responsible for keeping you upright will suddenly relax as you give into gravity's pull. This triggers your body to know that it's falling. You've probably experienced moments as you're falling asleep where you suddenly dream of falling and jerk awake. This is called a hypnic jerk and is thought to be caused by a sudden relaxation of your muscles in the process of falling asleep. Your brain mistakenly interprets this loss of muscle tone to mean that you're in free fall and you wake up with a jump as your body braces for impact. So, you don't need to escape gravity in order to feel weightless. You just need to avoid force differentials. Any time an object is in free fall, it experiences weightlessness. If you throw something, it'll be weightless from the moment it leaves your hand to the moment it hits the ground. Besides the air rushing by, the object will experience effectively the same conditions as it would in orbit above the atmosphere. I made a little demo you can try at home which sort of eliminates this wind factor. I stuck a camera and a flashlight into a cereal box that I filled with rubber bands, and then just threw it into the air. You can see that the rubber bands inside behave just as if they're in space. Since every rubber band in the box itself is being accelerated at the same rate by gravity, they experience no forces in relation to one another. To an observer within this little system, in this case the camera, it's functionally indistinguishable from a system that's not affected by gravity at all. This is similar to how the inside of a car traveling at highway speeds feels the same as if it were standing still. You only notice when the car accelerates. And the only reason you feel that acceleration is because the force is transferred from the car into your body, rather than acting on everything at once, like gravity would. There's an even simpler experiment you can do to get a taste of space. Just get a cup of water and throw it. If you swing the cup just right, the water will climb the side of the cup and launch out in a nice jet that you can then recapture. While in free fall, the water will move in all the beautiful ways it does naturally in space. You can see that the forms it takes are largely governed by its surface tension, rather than just being crushed down mostly flat by gravity, as we're normally used to on the surface of the Earth. Now that you understand why an object you throw experiences weightlessness, you know why astronauts do too. Astronauts in orbit aren't just in the similar situation, they're in literally the same situation. They were just thrown by rockets, and they were thrown so hard and fast that they're now falling back to Earth with the same curvature as the Earth itself. All of that gravitational force, again 90% of what we feel on Earth, is going into making them fall, pulling them off of their otherwise straight course and back towards the Earth. As long as they go fast enough, though, they'll never hit the ground. Being in orbit just means being thrown fast enough that you never land. So astronauts are being pulled towards the Earth by gravity, and they're constantly falling, but since every part of them, and every part of their environment, is being accelerated at the same rate, they have no way to feel it. They still have 90% of their weight, but within their spacecraft, they feel weightless. I want to mention one last thing. If the Earth weren't spinning, and the astronauts weren't in orbit, but simply standing at the top of a ladder, at the same elevation as they normally are, then a scale under their feet would report their weight as 90% of their weight on the surface. 
But reality isn't quite that simple, as the Earth is actually spinning. If the ladder were on the equator, Earth's rotation would provide a kind of slingshot effect. And at a certain height along that ladder, it would be spinning around so fast that an astronaut standing there would already be at the right speed for orbit. He would feel weightless and could simply step off and be in orbit. In fact, this exact height over the equator is where geostationary satellites orbit. Geostationary satellites float over a constant location on the Earth's surface, just like the floating astronaut would always be over the base of the ladder. This type of orbit is only possible along a ring almost exactly 22,236 miles above the Earth's equator, exactly where that ladder would make you feel weightless. A geostationary orbit is often used for communications and weather satellites, so that they always appear in the same place in the sky, and their movements don't need to be tracked in order to communicate with them.